I'm very glad that uh, my colleague, Deputy Emer Higgins, mentioned Francis Fitzgerald this evening. Of course, Deputy Higgins worked for Francis Fitzgerald. I worked for Francis Fitzgerald. And Minister Simon Harris worked for Francis Fitzgerald. So she was the very essence of opening the door and providing encouragement rather than closing the door or pulling up the ladder. And I think it deserves mention. Uh, actually, I'm also, I'm also glad that Emer mentioned her, the fantastic report led by Francis Fitzgerald in the European Parliament. The report of the European Parliament Committee on Women's Rights and Gender Equality, published uh, in, in November of last last year, specifically on how COVID-19 has impacted women. And it's, I, I would like to take the opportunity, Ken Corl, if it's in order, to, to use my contribution to read elements of that into the record, because it summarises better than I could the range of experiences that, that women have had and the succinct um, effect that COVID-19 has had. It's clear that the COVID-19 crisis has had clear gender perspectives uh, as they affect women and men differently. Women and girls will be in, uh, affected disproportionately in the short and medium and long term. The pandemic has exacerbated existing structural gender inequalities, in particular for girls and women from marginalised groups. Whereas official mortality figures show that men have a higher death rate from the virus, women are more at risk of contracting the virus due to their disproportionately high representation among frontline workers in essential sectors during the current crises. In relation to health, the result of the cancellation or postponement of non-essential health services, a delay and sometimes barriers arose in accessing critical care for urgent complaints. But in particular for women, access to sexual and reproductive health care and services hampered with serious consequences and indeed some legal attempts made to limit the safe right and legal abortion in certain EU member states, but also limits IVF services and provision for clinical management in cases of rape. Whereas, and we have spoken in this House about it several times, reports and figures not just from here but from several EU member states following, show that following the confinement period revealed a worrying increase in domestic and gender-based violence, including physical violence, psychological violence, coercive control and cyber violence. Whereas violence is not a private issue but a societal concern. Whereas lockdown measures made it more difficult for victims of intimate partner violence to seek help as they are often confined with their abusers with limited access to support services such as women's shelters and hotlines and insufficient support structures and resources can exacerbate this already existing shadow pandemic. Whereas confinement and isolation measures may have led to a higher risk of female genital mutilation with cases going undetected including in this country due to the interruption of schooling. Whereas economic and social stresses are exacerbating factors which could lead to an increase in domestic and gender-based violence in the long term and make it harder for women to leave, ab leave abusive partners. Whereas the increased use of the internet during the pandemic increases online and ICT facilitated gender-based violence, the online sexual abuse of children and especially girls whereas human rights defenders, women in politics, female journalists, women belonging to ethnic minorities, indigenous women, lesbian, bisexual and transgender women, women with disabilities, all of whom particularly targeted by ICT facilitated violence. And that is what it is. Whereas the majority of workers delivering essential services in the current crises are women, including 76% of healthcare workers, 82% of cashiers, 93% of childcare workers and teachers, 95% of domestic cleaners and helpers, and 86% of personal care workers across the EU. Whereas it's thanks to them for whom physical distancing is often not an option and who thus bear the increased burden of possibly spreading the virus to their relatives, Thanks to them, our economic, social, healthcare systems, our public life and our essential activities have been maintained. Whereas wages in many essential and significantly female-dominated sectors can be low, with often only minimum wage being paid. Whereas horizontal and vertical labour market segregation in the EU is still significant, with women overrepresented in less profitable sectors, where 30% of women work in education, health and social work, compared to 8% of men where 7% of women work in science, technology and engineering and mathematics compared to 33% of men, whereas the International Labour Organization warns that certain groups will be disproportionately affected by the economic crisis, including those entering the labour market, and that will increase inequality over time, whereas there is reason for concern about job losses in women-dominated professions due to the crises, where male-dominated sectors are more likely to recover earlier than typically female-dominated ones. 
where women are more likely to be in temporary, part-time and precarious employment than men, 26.5% compared to 15.1% of men, and who therefore will be, in, in the long run, significantly impacted by jobs losses. And in my own words, if I could say, the motherhood gap has never properly been recognised in this state and is in particular, has been, has been shown as so relevant during this pandemic. And it is not a matter for the Department of Children and Equality. It is, an, it is absolutely a matter of labour market optimisation and needs to be recognised by the financial departments of this state as such. Whereas research from Eurofound shows that the COVID-19 crisis poses a serious risk of rolling back decades of gains achieved in gender equality and labour market participation, particularly if activity is further hampered in sectors overrepresented by women. Whereas research shows that the reduction in the gender employment gap has stagnated over the past few years. Whereas COVID-19 has exposed a long-standing problem in care provision in many EU member states, whereas care needs to be viewed holistically along a continuum from childcare to after-school care to care for those with disabilities to care for older people. And this, and this I say for every woman in Ireland tonight, where the closure of schools, care centres and workplaces has increased the unequal distribution of non-paid domestic and care responsibilities within the home for women who, often in addition to balancing working from home, were left without sufficient support for child and elderly care. Whereas remote working is not a substitute for childcare, whereas women usually spend 13 hours more each week than men on unpaid care and housework, except in my house, of course, my husband is wonderful. Whereas the COVID-19 crisis has been an opportunity for men to become more involved in care responsibilities, yet also relieved, re re revealed how uneven the share of care and housework still is which is most likely to affect women and girls more severely, where balancing telework and family responsibilities adds additional strain and women therefore face an increased emotional, mental and social burden, whereas this could result in fewer achievements at work and have an impact on their professional development compared to their male peers. And I know what I'm saying there is ringing true to, to, to women who are listening to that tonight where a disproportionate and extreme burden has been placed on single parents, 85% across the EU of whom are women amounting to 6.7 million single mother households in the EU, almost half of which are at risk of, see of social exclusion or poverty. Whereas Eurofound survey results show that COVID-19 had a heavier impact on women with young children than men with the same household situation. Whereas almost one third of women with young children found it hard to concentrate on their work compared to 16% of men with young children. Whereas twice as many work with women with children were likely to feel too tired after work to do household work compared with 16% of men. Whereas in April 2020, women with children aged 0 to 11 were more likely to feel tense than men with children in the same situation more likely to feel lonely and depressed. Whereas women are not as equally involved in men when it comes to decision-making in the recovery phase due to the existing glass ceiling, whereas women and their representative civil society organisations, such as this House, must play an active and central role in decision-making processes to ensure their perspectives and needs are taken into account al along the decision-making design, implementation and monitoring of the recovery phase. Giancorla, it's obvious that these issues are persist across the EU and this state is not alone in its failure to include and respect women and their abilities in every walk of our state and society. We crucially have to address the underrepresentation of women in this house, the actual representative chamber of our democracy. Women and men are different. There's no reason to pretend otherwise or to want it to be otherwise. And I look this week at the research, uh, just this week from Women for Election, showing the overwhelming proportion of women in politics who needed to be asked to run rather than put themselves, put herself forward. And is this a reticence? Yeah, is it, a, is it a, a mark of a lack of confidence, as some has, have perceived? Or is it actually just an inherently different female trait that needs to be anticipated and accommodated as just as valid an approach as any other? I include myself in this apparent strike against women's advancement, uh, having to, that of having to ask to be run. But actually, perhaps what this difference in, in approach reflects is that, you know, women and men are different, and it is their very difference in approach than their range of approaches that is a strength to society. The pressure for women to behave in any way that is other than what they are naturally is itself a strike against their natural participation. We need more women in this house.
We need more women bringing their brilliant, natural selves, bringing the depth of their personal and professional experience and skill, being themselves, participating in their own way, in their own style, with their own styles, without fear of the stupidity of most of the comments to which they can be subjected for doing so, which silences them. And we need it everywhere else too. Thank you, Concordia.